What is up guys, from Sea to Stone here, and in this episode I'll be going over the harvest results for my 4x8 autoflower grow. I'll summarize this grow in its entirety, do a final weigh in, and for the first time ever I'll be testing the THC content of the buds that I've cultivated. I'm also going to be announcing the winners to the 100k giveaway, so make sure you guys stick around. This grow was certainly a fun one. I decided to grow three separate auto strains, Hubba Bubba Haze, Pink Panama, and OG Kush. These ladies were very eager to get underway. In fact, the Hubba Bubba Haze was by far the fastest sprouting strain that I've grown yet. Shortly after the grow started, I encountered an equipment malfunction with my extractor fan, which meant my temps soared through the roof. I ended up opting to leave my tent open to lower the temps, but as a result, my humidity dropped dangerously low. The AC that I'm using to cool my lung room also acts as a dehumidifier humidifier which essentially sucked most of the moisture out of my tent. Thankfully I was able to get a replacement fan overnight and I ended up upgrading the humidifier that I was using. The plants quickly bounced back and continued to do their thing. I implemented a few training methods with these gals starting with low stress training. I aimed to produce more tops and also even out my canopy. Both the Hubba Bubba Haze and Pink Panama were sent to me to test by Mephisto Genetics. I'm assuming by the time that I got them that they were still F2 which means their phenos can be slightly inconsistent. Four out of the six pink panamas started flowering very early at week three, which is some of the quickest that I've seen yet. The Hubba Bubba Haze might have been an F4. They vegged and flowered very consistently, and the OG Kush grew into considerably big autoflowers vegging for nearly five weeks. I'd assume that they were either F4 or F6. The inconsistent phenos that were shown in the pink panamas had some great upsides. I was able to get two of my plants to turn almost completely purple. I didn't even drop my temps, which is a sign that their color came strictly from their genetics. If you guys follow my Instagram or watch the live stream of me trimming them up, I'm sure that you can agree that they were absolutely beautiful come harvest time. Next it was time to chop these ladies down and trim them up. I did a bulk of my trimming on my YouTube live stream where I was also able to answer your guys' questions, but the real work came in after the stream where I had to trim up 11 more plants. How much you trim your buds is really up to you, but I personally like a really tight manicure job and this will make the process a little bit longer. As many of you know I run carbon filters in my tents, but that doesn't account for when the tents are open and especially during trimming at the end. I usually trim my buds in my room, but having an abundance of flour outside of the tent can lead to strong scents that can be noticed to others. Even though I grow in a legal state, having all of my neighbors know that I grow isn't something that I particularly want. This time around I used an air purifier that was sent to me by a company called EnviroCleanse. I know some of us might be trying to stay discreet with our grows, so something like this can really help out. When it's not in use, I have it running in my living room which help removes residual smells that might not be caught by my tent's filtration systems. It's also safer and more aesthetically pleasing than putting a bulky fan and filter outside of the tent. I'll leave links to this and every other product that I used in this grow in my video's description. Normally in my harvest videos I focus on the process itself, which normally includes chopping down, drying, trimming, curing, and then the final weigh-in. But I'll be going more in depth on those subjects with the last CBD cream and cheese plants that are currently finishing up. Most of the harvest techniques that I implemented during this grow were pretty much in line with what I've done in the past. If you guys want to know more about what my processes are, stay tuned for the next harvest video on the CBD cream and cheese, or feel free to check out some of my previous harvest videos. This time around I thought it would be fun to actually test my buds to see what THC content they produce. For this, I'll be using a device called the T-Check Flower and Concentrate Kit. This allows you to test your butt at home without having to send it to a lab. Now that I have this kit, I'll start including the THC content after each harvest. The process was fairly easy to complete from start to finish and only took about 5 minutes per test. Here are the results from testing each drain. They're all fairly consistent across the board and certainly not bad for autos at all. I haven't been able to see what Mephisto claims the Pink Panama and Hubba Bubba Hayes THC content will be, but Seedsman suggested that the OG Kush autos would come in between 15-20%, to 20%, so these results are consistent with what they're claiming. 
Now that all our bud is trimmed and tested, let's get everything weighed up as a whole. The OG Kush Autos by Seedsman weighed in at 361.2 grams, with the average plant yielding about 120 grams. This is a great yield for an auto variety. The six Hubba Bubba Haze Autos weighed in at 524.4 grams, with the average plant yielding 87.6. Not a bad yield at all. They didn't get as big as the OG Kush Autos, but they filled up incredibly thick and yielded well over a full pound of weed. Lastly, the six Pink Panamas came in at 426.3 grams. There was a major contrast in plant size between all of these ladies. Two vegged out for longer and averaged about 109 grams per plant, while the other four early bloomers averaged about 52 grams per plant. Where some quantity might have been lacking in a few plants, the quality was outstanding and is by far the best looking bud that I've cultivated yet. As I'm sure you guys know, I'd always choose quality over quantity. All in all, that brings our final yields to a whopping 1,312.8 grams, just under 3 pounds of weed. Not bad at all for a 4x8 autoflower grow. This next season is currently in the works and is getting ready to be started. Once my last two plants finish up, we'll get the next grow underway. Let me tell you, this next season will be a major one. I'm also going to be releasing a few grow styles that I haven't yet released publicly, so if you're not already subscribed, make sure to do so now. For hitting 100,000 subscribers, I hosted one of the largest giveaways that I put together yet. With over $5,500 in prizes, 10 winners, and 18,000 entries, I'm happy to announce that the winners have been chosen. Congratulations to all of you. I'll be reaching out to each and every one of you personally through an email. I want to thank everyone else who entered, and don't stress if you didn't win this one because there's going to be many more to come. I'll be seeing you guys next week with another video. As always, guys, happy growing.